again. Hi, Hester and Terence. I'm so happy to be on screen today with you guys. How are you doing? I'm doing very okay. And Wonderful. Uh, Sitting here. Sitting in beautiful Liberia. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, Hester, um, Terence is tuning in from Birmingham, UK, and Terence, Hester is tuning in from Liberia. Okay. So it's going to be a beautiful conversation today on leadership. I'm just going to pop you guys back. Hi, Terence. How are you? Very well, very well, Hester. Thank you. I'm just going to pop you guys back, back, back seat while I bring up some videos and I try to connect with the audience. And then I'll be bringing you in in the next five minutes. Is that okay? That's brilliant. Perfect. All right, then. I'll be speaking with you soon. That's great. So I, every now and then... No, I'll bring I'll bring you permanently on the screen. Okay, Adeline. All right then. Yes. Hello, people. Tous ces diplômes, ils se promènent de partout et que 
vous devez faire la différence parmi toutes ces personnes. Il faut que vous ayez une valeur ajoutée. C'est cela qu'il s'agit. You must be a logistic officer. Then you're missing your dream. You need to look at your CV. After this meeting, come to me. Bring your CV. Bring your mission statement to me. And let's talk about the brand new.
tout savoir mettre des limites. Dans les plaisanteries, dans le travail même, Can you imagine? Only mine. <laughs> Terence, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Ash, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me on, on Facebook? I just want to make sure people can hear me on Facebook. Please, someone in the comments line, just tell me. Roland, can you hear me now? Uh, can you see me at all? No, I can't see you. No, I can't see you. Okay, Roland, can you see me? I can see myself. I'm on show now. Okay, Adeline, you've gone. I'm. Um, um, Silence, I can't see you. Okay. Can you see me now? Yes, I can yes, see you and I can hear you. you. Okay, Muna, Muna, can you see me? Nancy, can you see me? Sound is okay. Sound is okay. This one, can you see me? <laughs> okay, thank you so much for your patience, guys. You know, sometimes when we are doing this online, online streaming, we have a technical issue. Terry, I'm just going to pop you back in again, okay? No problem. No problem. All right. Okay, so we're back. I'm so sorry for the technical issue. We did test and everything seems to have been working really well. But right now, okay, everybody can see me, everybody can hear me. So we're back. Now, I just want to pop in um, my guest for today. My guest for today, we have um, Hester Becker. She is the owner and the CEO of Elizabeth Village and Resort. This is a massive resort in Liberia. I mean, this is a go-to place where um, if you're ever thinking of where you want to go and just have that you time, that is a place to go. Apart from that, she has a huge, you know, she has an extensive career in the corporate world after running her own communication company. But before running her own communication company, she used to work with some of the top communication and PR brands in the US. She also had the Lifestyle Magazine, which was geared towards the diasporans and Africa. A few years ago, she moved back to Liberia because she believed and she, know that she knew that there was something deeper in her that she wanted to give back to her community she did her cup she did her you know she did work for the you know for the her, her government the tourism in the ministry of tourism where she managed to change a lot of you know a, a lot about how people look at liberia her country after establishing this platform and after making people to understand what liberia was all about with her expertise she decided to settle into relax or retire into her proper business where she employs lots of people op offering opportunities for people to you know so she in her own right is a thought leader is an inspirational leader and she is a go-getter our next speaker is Therese Diku, who works as a business analyst for Halford Group apart from that she's the CEO of Lead Academy this is an academy whereby she just mentors and coaches people to take that leadership, you know, that leadership position. So I'm going to be popping both people on the screen with me. But before I do that, I want to tell you what my mantra is in leadership. You know, Emma Cesar, I believe so much, you know, I believe in him. I believe in that guy because there's something that he told me, well, all of us a few years ago, and I will forever follow that because it has helped me to be who I am today, to do what I do and to manage and lead the people who actually work with me. He said, do not walk in front of me for I may not lead you. Do not walk 
behind me and may not lead you and do not walk in front of me for I may not follow you. Why don't you walk with me and be my friend? When I think of leadership, that is the first thing that comes to mind. And to me, that's what leadership is all about. It is all about your ability to get people to walk with you and achieve that objective. But I know my speakers have different perspectives because they come from different back, from different backgrounds. Terence has a typical business business background, so I'm sure he's going to be talking a lot about the business side of things. And Hester, who is in the communication field and have been for over 20 years, has a different background altogether. So she too is going to be talking about things from her own perspective. So I'm going to pop both people on the screen and then let's roll. Hello, Hester. <laughs> Let me get you on the Hello, Hello, area. How are you? How are you? It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Super. Thank you. Greasy and Greasy sunny. Greasy and sunny. Oh, yeah. We are 30 degrees in, in India, and, you know, I just feel like burning. <laughs> <laughs> so no, we're far from that. <laughs> You're going to be introducing yourself in this minute. But before you do that, let me get Terrence on the phone, on, on the line as well. That way, we can all be cousins. Hello, Terence. Hello, Adeline. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing and great. you? And you? I am perfect. Thank you so much, Terence. Terence, um, uh, fortunately, decided to come on board today when I had um, challenges with the other speaker. She couldn't make it on time and she couldn't spend most of the time with us today. So, Terence is in here because I happen to have known Terence almost all my adult life. I have listened to Terence speak at different events. And I see Terence with a lot of, you know, he has achieved a lot in his career. And right now what he's doing for his community in the UK is just, you know, you cannot compromise that. So the person who might talk could join us today and add value to this conversation of two people was Terence. And fortunately, he was available to join us today. So thank you so much, Terence, for helping didn't pull the rug underneath your feet, but, you know, I'm, 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 I'm honored and I hope I do you proud with, 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 with what uh, we're going to be discussing today. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So Hester, let's hear from you. How is Liberia today? Tell us, tell us a little bit about you and your background. Liberia, Liberia today, today is, um, um, it's is striving. striving. You know, you know. Considering all the situations that situations we currently have, that we have in, in the world, in the world um, we're making um, we're it for sure that, for that we, we continue to continue to continue to Liberia, uh, people, who people who never give up. Give up. So, we so we are continuing to push ahead, to push ahead. And, um, um, as a nation, a nation and towards nation, nation, nation building. building. We're also, we're also, you know, we're on the thing in the corner of the world has been. You know, most of you know, them most are here. So currently, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of just sort of relaxing, relaxing and laid back, back away from the corporate world. So I'm pretty much I'm enjoying myself, myself right now, right Adeline. Now, Adeline. <laughs> that's, that's, the most important, that's the most important thing in life, you know, being able to do the thing that you do and enjoy yourself. So I'm happy you, you decided to come on board today to share corporate experience and to help those who are at different level of their corporate life to, to keep doing what they're doing and to learn. What about you, Terrence? Tell us, how is Birmingham today? Oh, Birmingham is... Uh... Uh... Very hot, very I want hot. Say. So um, um, I'm being indoors. I'm being it's, indoors it's, it's not a, not the best. best. But hopefully, uh, I'm I'm here I'm because here obviously because I'm on this I'm on, on this, this, this forum, forum, and, uh, and uh, I look forward to it. Thank you, thank you so much, Terence. Tell us a little bit about you, who you are, and what you Okay, I, okay. I, am, uh, I am a business, a business analyst, analyst by, by my uh, profession. profession, and uh, I, I work with the Halfos group. group. 
and uh, and also uh, do have a side, side hustle, so which is basically a, a, a yeah, called Lead Academy. And where we basically where we mentor, mentor and, and, and and train and business analysts, analyst. and also basically and also get basically people get to people you know reevaluate re and strategize and on their career, career uh, uh, and and get a better idea better of where they want to be in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Terrence, and thank you so much, Hester. I think the conversation is about to to to. So pick up, but before that goes on, if I haven't introduced myself, I am Adeline, Adeline Adekamga, and I am the CEO and founder of Fabapric Media Group. And what we do and what we specialize in is to specialize in doing this, bringing people together to share their expertise for free. How cool is that? <laughs> so we get, all the, we get all the right people to give you this for free. So I'm truly honored. I truly thank you guys for taking time to bring your expertise on the table and giving it out there for free. So let's talk on our first question. Today we'll be talking about leadership versus management. Are we going to look at the overlays and all these the different things that, that these two has and we know sometimes we say a leader is not a manager or a manager is not a leader but i think i want to hear from you guys because you are the expert so terence from your perspective what's the difference between a leader what's the difference between leadership and management what how would you put that difference out there okay um it, okay, it's, um, it's, it's 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 one of the, one of the interesting, interesting questions, questions that tends to happen a lot in corporate in the corporate circles the, the, the most important thing for me for you to understand in terms of the difference is the fact that uh, leadership is really it's about influence and basically you can, you can influence people without necessarily being the one that actually gets the job done so, so so essentially that's in in in, in, in a nutshell what what the leadership is so the manager so essentially the manager are the people who have, who have to manage the, to manage people, that the people that do the task. Yeah, and they yeah. might they, they might, themselves might they also be themselves involved, involved in involved in performing the, 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 ta the, the task. And there are several, and several different, traits different traits that differentiate, that differentiate you, know, you, know, you know leadership from from management. From management yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know the know, leaders, the leaders are, basically are basically aspirational. They have the vision. They have the vision. While you know the manager well, essentially that the one that basically that delivers, delivers or works on delivering the vision. Delivering the vision. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know that's that's a very that's good very a, a good, good uh, example, example of, of, how of how to differentiate it. it. And, and as we go and over and the session, over the I'll, session give I'll give you some more. Give you some more. Yeah. Okay. So Hester, is, is is there something you might want to add to that? Okay, I think we're having internet connection. I think we're having connection problem. I'm just going to speak and pop her Can you back. repeat the um, question, please? Yeah, the question was the leadership versus management. You know, what's the difference? How would you differentiate both? Hello? Hello, Hester, can you hear us? Okay, okay, Adeline? Adeline? Yes, I can hear you now, yeah. Her line is breaking. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. I think the I question think is, the question uh, is uh, what's, what's the difference between leadership, leadership and, management? and management? Is that correct? Is that correct? Yes, that's a question. Yeah. Wow. You're, you're correct. That's the question, Hester. The question is the difference between leadership and management from your perspective. Okay, I okay. think I, I, think, I think, think what the think question what is the difference is between leadership, leadership and, management. and management. So uh, uh, my reception is really poor, from really poor from five, but I'll find better. Um, um, with leadership, with leadership what, I what I see leadership as, I grew up a privilege, someone 
allows you to enter into their, their life and to sort of to impact, sort of impact, impact their, life their life through trying to make trying sure, to make sure, sure that, that um, I believe that as a leader, you look at um, people that are around you, whether it's your children, um, your employers, and you look at their abilities and your and your as a leader as a leader is to bring out the best that that is in that person. That um, sometimes sometimes you know they might not 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 there. But as a leader, as a leader today, the greatest, the greatest purpose, purpose is to ensure, is to ensure that, that those that those that, uh, those that allow those that to, to their lives that, that you said positive, positive impact, impact, especially, especially through, through action. action. Um, um, you know, as a leader, to me, it's most, most important that, that you show your action and, and you know model behavior. behavior. And, and then you will then find you that find those that are around you will be impacted in a more positive way. Management, management, on the other on hand, the other hand I think leaders should be managed. Be managed. And, uh, and sometimes, uh, sometimes leaders, leaders, we want people, people to become, to become our, managers. our managers. Management, management has more, has to, more deal to deal with, with the day-to-day -day day operation, operation in terms in of, terms of, of in, in terms of, of you know, control, control, in terms of um, making, sure making sure that, that this is a I could, I could hear her hear clearly, clearly. Oh, there's, um, um, there's um, a, lot a lot of um, uh, echo, 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 echo in the, echo in the conversation, conversation. But, I but I could understand what uh, Hester, what, uh, Hester, was, Hester was, was saying. Okay, so Terence, would, would you say there was a difference? Did you say an institution needs both a manager and a leader? Or do you think this one person can play both roles? Well, it, well, it, 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 it it, it, depends it depends on how big, how the, organization big the organization is, is because, because um, leaders, leaders uh, tend to be the tend people that pull people. people. There's a pull There's factor a pull for factor, for factor. factor. While, for while for managers is more or less like a push like factor. Push factor. So essentially, so essentially, you know, you know, you know leaders, leaders like ask like questions, questions why managers, managers give, directions. give directions. So you know, so leaders, you know, leaders leaders have followers, leaders have followers. They, they, have the they have the vision why the managers, why actually, the managers actually are subordinate. You know, they manage, what, so they manage happened. what happened. And then also, and then leaders, also are leaders, are motivational, leaders are motivational, you know, and then the managers then basically the managers are more are authoritarian, more more hands-on. So it, it, really so it really depends on the size of the organization. Size of the organization. You know, if it's a small business, a small you definitely, business, you have, definitely to have, have to have the, your leadership your and your leadership management, and management skills, skills um, you know, meet together. together. So what you're saying is that um, both are very necessary in an institution. Yes, and definitely. Yes, definitely. In order for an institution to be important, or for an institution to be successful. That's what you're saying, basically. Yes, right? yes, yes. Okay. So... I think we've lost Hester, so we're gonna come back to her. Same question when she pops up. But in the meantime, let's see if we can let's see if we can add her back on stream. Hi, Hester. Hello, back on again. Hello, back on again. Back <laughs> I'm on sorry. Again. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. We do understand that sometimes it's not as good as we want it to be. So we're just talking about if an institution needs both a leader and a manager. What would you say? Would you say it's necessary for an organization to have both a leader and a manager? Yes, yes. I believe, I believe that, that um, you need you both need in any in institution. Any institution. For, for an institution to be successful, you must you have must both have management and, and leadership. And leadership. Um, because, um, because leadership, leadership also, also, also hides the culture, the culture of the organization. Of the organization. And, and if you have, have excellent, excellent leadership, leadership, you will have an excellent, have excellent culture. culture. Uh, management, uh, management is also necessary because, because you must have control. So therefore, um, you do need a combination of both. You need inspiration 
you need training. training. You need to be able. You need to be able to, able to ensure that people that come that into, your come into your workplace are able, are able to grow, to grow and become the best that they that can, they can be, be in that in workspace. Space. Um, and even and if even they if leave they the organization, they do leave. leave. You need both. So why? Why? I mean, I, I maybe you maybe you you've managed to 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 knock it off, and I just missed it. But why would why would I want to you know the management, and why would I want the leadership skills? Why is it important to have both? It's necessary to be um, able to lead as well as manage because in, in your organization, you must be able to do, you must be able to, to function sometimes as a leader and sometimes as a manager. When you are heading any organization, we have so many people that are looking up to you and it's not just for leadership, but they also want to make Sure. That you that you are able are to manage, able as, manage well. as well. Now, now mandatory, mandatory, I am a manager. A manager. Because so you, 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 what, what I, I, I try my organization, I try, try to empower everybody, everybody into the space that they are in. And um, um, one of the things I try to tell people, even if you are a cleaner, a cleaner in the organization, in the organization I think that you are a tool for that space. If you are cleaning. That's you are into housekeeping. I believe that you are CEO for that thing as a house um, um, So I decide you, 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 you know, as far as I'm concerned, concern, I can tell you all of the things that leadership is absolute quality that you must have to make sure that the culture of your organization is a positive culture. Do you need to have hope? I think so. I think I think, so. I think, I think it's think necessary. It's mandatory, mandatory. I don't think. I don't think. But um, but, because um, because as, a leader, as a leader, you might not manage. manage. But I believe, but that, I believe that we that all must possess some, some leadership and some leadership potential. So from 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 what I from what I hear, from what I hear, and from what I understood, um, a leadership is 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 it is that skill set which you need to do in order to help. <laughs> culture of the organization to make sure people take action, people are responsible for the decision. So it's more on de decision driven and empowering your team to be able to, to manage their you know their their department or their area of work without being I don't want to call it micromanage, but without running to you all the time for what to do. It's more about being just getting it done, making decisions, right, right. creating opportunities. Making sure you know these are your objectives. This is where you want. To, this is what you want to achieve. Coming up with skills or strategies to achieve that, and at the end, maybe reporting to the you know to the, the, the top management or to the middle management or whatever. So you don't need to be the CEO or you don't need to be the manager to be a leader. So what what you're saying, except I got you wrong, is to be a leader or for you to be a leader, it is important to have that decision manage or decision making. Skills which makes you or which gives you the upper hand to take the one step forward without waiting for direction. Am I correct or somehow? Or... That's, 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 correct. that's correct. Because, because, for, because me, for me, leadership, leadership is the vision of the organization. Organism. Leadership, yeah. leadership, leadership is the conscience of the organization. Of the organization. You know, so to me, so to me you have to have to have you have to have it. You must have the conscience of the organization. You know, those are the qualities that you know you find in leadership. And in an organization, you must have. You must. You know, you must. You know, you must. You must have in order for the organization to function as um as it should. As it should. Okay, I think I think you're absolutely correct there. I'll have to agree with you one hundred percent. Um Terence, would you want to add something to, to Hester? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean for me it's more or less like, or less like you know, re reinforcing, re reinforcing what you said. What you said. So, for example, so for example, if, if you operate a small business, business, you know, you definitely, you need, definitely to need to have both. 
you know, you need to be a strong leader and you and a manager of well. because you, because the idea is that you have to actually bring on board those who are working for you. You have to ensure that you share the vision and ensure that you can then help them achieve that vision. Yeah. So leadership, so leadership again, again it's about you know about, getting you know, people to getting comprehend, comprehend and, believe and believe in the vision of the, the, company. Of the company. So if it's a bigger so organization, a big organization, then you can basically you can be, be, the leader, be the leader while you have, while managers, you have managers who will then administer then or, administer drive, or that drive that vision. That vision. Essentially. Essentially. Yeah? Yeah. So it's quite important, so it's quite important that, you that you have both skills, skills for a small organization, a small organization but you know you, but can, you, still, you can still you know split it in the sense that you can have managers that would help to, would actually help to actually deliver your vision, deliver your vision. Be, the be the hands on, be the people that will do the day to day activities and get things done. Get things done. Yeah. Can it yeah. can it be both though? Can can we have managers who are leaders or leaders has to because my, my, my confusion or what I want to establish today, yeah. Yeah. Personally and probably to you know for most of those who are watching us is if I'm a manager and I've been given directive to, to achieve a certain goal, you know. At what point do I uh, do I say I'm a leader? You know, sometimes it's a team lead, it's a work stream lead, it's a this. So sometimes you can get people in the corporate world where who are middle management, and although they do understand that they are managers, there are certain things that for them to achieve, they will need to hone on some skills which are, um, I'll say, leadership skills. At that point, would they say they're playing the role of a leader or they're playing the role of a manager or they're playing the role of both? Or we look at this differently, Terence. Okay. Okay. The the way the, the way, way I will see this is more or less like what 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 uh what, what, uh, what leadership what leadership, leadership means. So leadership mean, what does the leader do? And what does the manager do? Okay. That's the, that's the best that's way to, the, to, the differentiate, best it, to yeah? differentiate it. Yeah. So, so for example, so, for example leaders, will leaders will ask questions. Why managers, well, will, give managers will give directions? will give directions. Right. You know, okay, leaders okay, basically leaders ensure basically that people follow, people follow them. They have followers. They have followers. While you know while, the managers you know, the basically managers have subordinates, have, have people that they manage. People that they manage. Yeah. yeah. So you have the leaders so have show people what to do. What to do? While the managers will tell people what to do. Yeah. You know, leaders basically implement good ideas, the vision. While managers actually have good ideas. Yeah. And then you know, leaders create change. They create a vision. While managers, While managers almost managers follow, or follow or react, or react, to, the react to the change or the vision that has been that has laid down. Laid yeah? Yeah? And then, you know, and in then other ways, in you, other can ways say, you can say leaders, leaders help to develop help people. To develop, you know, they can develop managers develop and everything. Managers and everything. While, While the managers the basically managers get the people to do things. To basically, they exercise power and responsibility over the people. I don't know what that helps you to get more to differentiate when you're acting as a leader and when you're acting as a manager. Yeah, I think I think I think it does. I think it does. And to be honest, a lot of studies have shown the the interplay between the two. And what we're trying to what 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 are we trying to establish today is actually the next question is actually on how to strike a balance. Hester, if you join if you join us, oh she's gone again. So that's gonna leave you know, and Terry. Okay, Hester is back. So we're trying to see how do we strike a balance. How do we strike a balance between Leadership and management. So Hester, if you if you can hear us, maybe you want to, to have a go at that. Okay, I can hear okay, you. I can hear you, hear you a little you bit. A little it's bit. but I'll I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Yeah, you are clear. When you speak it's quite clear, you know. So just roll on. We can see you, but yeah. <laughs> we can see you. In the picture. Okay. So that's okay. fine. Great. Great. <laughs> so, Hester, we're talking about striking a balance. How do you strike a balance? How do you strike the right balance between leadership? Okay, Adeline, I didn't get that question. How do you strike um, the right balance between leadership and management? Yes. Hmm, that's hmm, a very, good, very question. good question. Um, um because, because I think I you're think continually, continually trying, trying to find, to find, that, find balance. that balance. Uh, you, uh, have, you to have to find the balance. Find the balance. Because, because many times, many times um, um, 
if you don't have the balance between leadership and management, you you you, you forget about doing one or the other. As what I'm doing, you know, we have we have the employee. Everyone is paying attention to what Hesse is doing, and everybody wants to make sure that Hesse is also involved in both management and leadership. Um, so it's really important that I'm continually continuing while I'm also also working. So to strike the so balance, balance, you 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 sort of have to want the employees to know that are with them. You also have to be able to calm down, you know, when you, you know, have, know, when you, have, when you have, um, you also have to draw the line and so that they understand that as much as you're mentoring, you are also still here for business, and you know you have to be able to be very decisive in actions, even. Whenever, whenever, whenever someone someone that you have been mentoring, mentoring, but you recognize, but you recognize that, that there is no growth, no development, no development. you have to be able to be decisive and think in terms, think of, the in terms of the business. Because at the end of the day, it's really important, really important that you are managing the business. business. So, um, so it's, it's, it's important it's that you don't get lost in the bliss of being a leader. Forget about being a manager. Thank you, Hester. I think your, your network is doing us some justice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's quite nice because I managed to, to get a, you know quite a lot into what you're saying. Before I come back with the recap, let me hear if Terry has something to add to that. Hi, Terence. Hello. 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 Yeah, uh, oh, do you want me to uh, add uh, on add the question on or? The question yes, or... I just wanted to add, you know, just in case people did not get what Hester was saying. So what was what was so the specific, was, what was question, the specific again, question again then? The specific question is striking the balance. How do you strike a balance between being a manager and being a leader? Okay. okay. Well, the the way the, I, the I see it, I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna flip gonna, I'm gonna flip it 360 degree, degree here. Well, well, the way I see it is basically a leader and a manager are more or less like different in the sense of roles and responsibility. So it's essentially so it's to me, it's not necessarily, me, it's not necessarily a, 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 job a, a job title. So for example, so for right, example, it might, right, you, you it will have instances, instances where you have, you have to lead and you have instances, and you have instances where, you where you have to manage, have to manage right? right? So it really depends, so it really on, whether depends on whether as an organization, you split, you split essentially those roles and say a leader should not be a manager or if you want to be a manager, you just manage. For example, for right, example okay, right, okay, you would you will be, you, the, one be the one that sets the vision for an, for an organization. You might not necessarily be the one that actually one that delivers, delivers that vision. That vision. You will always you lead always towards lead the delivery, of, the that delivery of that vision. But there will probably, there be, will managers probably be managers or, 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 or further subordinates down, down the line that will help deliver it. I mean, this gives me a classic example of when you look at when an organization is setting strategy. Or using what is or called using your, most your most analysis, where so you have where you, you have your where vision, you have your mission, your mission, you know, you know, and then your and your task, your and then the, and you know the the objective, the, the, the strategy, strategy, and then the tactics. And then the tactics. Too. So all those so basically all those different, different, areas different areas have different, have different deliverables. deliverables, and those are and based those on are based your on one being leaders and the other being managers. For example, right, For example, a leader right, motivates, a leader and, motivates expires. and expires. However, However the, manager the manager will administrate, will administrate and, control. and control. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, so for a leader example, looks a leader into the future, future, while the while manager the works, manager works on, the on the present, delivering what has already been agreed. Already been agreed. So, I so, I think you know there is a little bit of a dichotomy. Bit of a dichotomy there's a little bit of, a, a little bit of a autonomy, a autonomy to an extent between those two roles. And they might overlap they might in the overlap case, in case where you have, you have an organization where you have to be, have a, manager to be a manager and a leader. And a leader. Yeah, that's my, take, that's on that my one. take on that one. Thank you so much, um, Terence. I think I think what uh, Hester and yourself you're saying, what you're saying basically is correct. And I'm just going to do a recap because I know some people might not have understood what Hester was trying to say. And to blend these, what, 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 I've, what I've gathered from you are with a leader, the leader would think long term, so that's the vision, and the yep. manage the yep. manager would think the now. How do we get to achieve the vision? What are the day to day operational activities that we need to incorporate into our everyday job to make that vision that has been established by the leader to work? 
Whereas yep. on the yep. other side, the employees, they will look at the manager to give them set assignments that they need to do to achieve that vision. So what both of you are basically saying is that you have the vision, you have the activities that need to fit into getting the vision right, and you mm -hmm. have the employees who need to make sure these activities are done. So in the nutshell, whatever the case, the leader, the manager, and the employees all need to understand the vision of the company, and they all need to work, work towards achieving that as a team. That was the first thing I got from both of you. The other thing I got was um, that we cannot separate both because it truly depends on what we are going to achieve at that time. We cannot separate these two. That you need the skills, which I think has mentioned the soft skills that you will need as the manager or as a leader in order for the vision of the company to come into play. So when we talk about soft skills, I, it brings me back to last week where we were talking about emotional intelligence and how powerful that session as well was. And these are some of the skills that both the manager and the leader or the, man, or the leader and the manager need in order to drive the company to the next level. So uh, except there is something that I, 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 I mean, I didn't quite get, but based on your, you know, your feedback or your presentation, that is, what, you know, Chris, did I, is it correct? Did I, did I capture the points correctly, Hester? Or is there something I missed? So was, was my recap correct? Is, Can you is, hear me? Is, is, is Hester still with us? Hester still with us. Okay. Hester, are you with us? Oh, sorry. Hester, are you with us? Was my recap correct? Is, are we looking at long-term goal? Are we looking at soft skills? Are we looking at assignments and how to achieve this assignment, the overall objective? Striking the balance is about, I mean, the balance is about what? About the operations and the vision, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay, just, I just want to make, I, don't, I just want to make sure, you know, our audience kind of... Okay, I don't, I don't, we're going okay. To, so while we're trying to, to sort out um, the mic, going to the next question, let me just pick up some of the comments that we have. and um, welcome some of the people who are joining us. So I'll start at the top. Second song says, um, oh, Marion. Marion says, I'm glad to make it. Thank you so much for making it, Marion. Masango Marion, thank you. Second is, I'm on it. Thank you, You're, I'm happy to be there. Roland was just complaining about the volume, which of course we couldn't get um, initially. Nina as well. And um, okay, Mercy was like the sound is not working, everything is okay. So now we're going to okay. So, those were just feedback that we got. Let's get to the actual question. Ram says, Say, I think that leadership is the skill of leading others by examples, whereas management is an art of systematically organizing and, coordinate, and coordinating things in an efficient way. Spot on, Ramses. I think that is everything that we've been trying to say today. Please do leave us your comments. And in case you have any addition that you want to do, please do feel free to add on to what we're discussing today. Our theme for today is management versus leadership. How do we strike a balance? Is, is it necessary for an, for an organization to have both a leader and a manager? And what are the differences between both? So let's go to our next question which is more on what are some of the characteristics of an effective leader or an, or an eff, or effective leadership? So let's pick one. What are some of the characteristics of an effective leader? What is an effective leader? How is it supposed to be? Is there something that you can spot on someone and say that is an effective leader or does it depend, you know? Let's start with you, Hester. Let's see if you can, if you can, if you can hone on that. Well, I think, well, I think some of the characteristics, some of the characteristics first, first um, you need a visionary. Um, you need a visionary. You have to have, you have, you have, you have to have, 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 have,
you know, you know, um, um, that leaders because, because they tend because they tend to be very inspirational. inspirational. Um, people, um, that people that are able, are able to listen because, because um, um, one, of the, one most of the most important, the most important things of leadership things is to allow other, other people to find their voice. Their voice. So you have to be able to listen. Um, you have to be very inspirational. Be able to get uh, analyze, you know, uh, um, situations, uh, analyze, analyze where somewhere is their, their life. life. Um, you have to, you have to go, um, able to inspire, positive, positive, positive someone who is a very very person, uh, someone who is able to go to the yard. Um, a leader is someone who, you know, see beyond a title. You know, um, I don't believe in title, so I think leader. I think leader. That are you know bought you know bought by title, by title, but more action oriented and are and are totally uh, totally uh, uh, more uh, uh, getting job done. Some of the characteristics I believe of a leader. Of course, we have to be able to serve this. Uh, effective leaders are people that are humble. You have to humble yourself uh, to be able to serve others. And, and to me, those to are me, those some are of the most major, major, major qualities. Major quality leaders. Leaders. I'll definitely agree with 100% on that. Terrence, is there something you might want to add? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, yeah I've, I've, I've got a few got as a well few of uh, some of the, some of the uh, good uh, uh, leadership uh, characteristics. characteristics. So essentially, so essentially you know, to, me to me, is you need to be someone who actually someone leads, who actually leads rather, than rather than follow. You know, you know, someone who gets someone results, gets results, results you know, essentially. essentially. And you need to be someone who has a good awareness of what's awareness happening what's around, you. around you. Because remember, because you're, you're, remember you're the one with the vision. With the vision and you know, and you know, a lot of people look towards you, you know, to drive, you know, the, the organization. So essentially, that leads to the next one, which would be somebody you. Be someone who is driven, you need someone who has passion. You have you need, you need someone with a team player, someone who can be able to take risks because you know having a vision does not mean you 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 already know what will happen in the future, but you're you're essentially taking a calculated risk. So you need to be able to be someone who also supports. So you support your managers to ensure that they can deliver that vision. You need to be someone who is honest. So honesty is quite important. Innovative. So because again, it ties very well to vision as well. So and then you have to be in overall a people's person. You know, people need to be able to approach you. People need to come to you. You know, you know, because you're someone who is basically, you know, take people along. You're the one that's taking everybody along in this journey. This journey. This vision. Yes. Yeah. Wow, Terry, thank you. I think I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna give an upload to that. I mean to both of you because um your points are so when I was doing my research a few days ago on this topic, I thought this question how can you how can you characterize or how can you say this person has great leadership skills? Because at the end of the day, it depends on the the perceived you know, who is looking at you, who is validating you, you know, but there should be there are certain things that really uh, makes those around you to identify you as this person. And Hester was talking about you have to be inspirational and pull out the positive from others. She also mentioned you have to be a visionary, meaning that's a vision and whatever you need to do to get to where you want to be that's the direction that you're going to take and nothing is going to dissuade you from that except of course as terry mentioned you need to be aware of your environment just in case something changed you know something changes you need to be able to adapt to change and and bring out you know a new ways of doing things which comes to to performance meaning as as as, as hester said high performer you have to be a high performer it's not just about talking it's about really taking action and making sure those around you feel supported as, as Terrence mentioned very humble humility is something that most often we say in a corporate world we don't need to be humble because those who are aggressive always seems but yeah this brings me back to you know to when I was in the corporate world those who are aggressive and who are not humble at all they used to have all the right position they used to be able to climb the ladder to the top end so what happens when they get there? There is one thing that happens when they get there. They 
get burned so easily because climbing right there at the top has actually made them to make so many to burn a lot of bridges at the bottom so much so that when they finally hit the top it is so difficult for them to stay there for as long as they can because there is that fire that comes from you know that comes from below so yes humility is very important and hester also mentioned it's not about a title you know you don't just want to say I'm a leader because you want to carry that title, but it's about your action, about the way you respect others, the way you're humble, the way you take calculated risks, as Terry said, and supporting those around you, allowing others to find their voice, or better still, allowing others to use their voices. So that's a very, very, I mean, that's a clear way to, to address that. So this is bringing us straight right up to our next question, which is about how do you identify when you're not playing your role as either one, a manager, two, a leader? So how do you identify? How do you spot it? Hesa, let's start with you. Huh. You identify when you're not playing your role as a leader or a manager. Because, because you begin to you feel, begin it. feel it. I mean, I mean you are in tune, tune, tune as a leader. As a leader. You, know, you know exactly where you're headed. Where you're headed. You know, you know, in, 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 in starting a business and work or organization, the first step is to sit down and put together your plan and your strategy, you know, your strategy and most of, most importantly, your goals. So when you realize that you are not meeting your goals that you have, um, you know, either put down on paper or set out to do, you know, at that point, it's important to set, you know, sit back and, you know, begin to, you know, take a step back, take time away, begin to um, assess what's going on. You know, and sometimes you have to reinvent, you know, but it's really, really important that you gauge yourself every step of the way. And so you, you can, you, you know when you're not playing that role, when your goals and your vision are not coming into reality, especially along the timelines um, that you have set. So it's always important to um, make sure you set timelines, um, you have goals, and then it gives you also how people are growing and developing around you. You know, if you realize um, that people are not growing, that people are not developing, then you also have to uh, step back and assess that situation as well, because it could be maybe the leadership, it could be the management, or it could be maybe the person that you have on board. You might have the wrong person in a position. So um, those are some of the key way ways in which, um, you know, you can identify when you are not, you know, on, on point. Terry, would you have something to add to that? No, um, just, uh, to, just to chip in a few uh, items that I think might also help. Sometimes for you to basically, you know, kind of get a sense that you might not necessarily be, be you know, performing uh, or basically having to fall to as either a leader or a manager, it's more or less like you look at some of the traits or you look at some of the things that essentially defines those roles. And once they start faulting, for example, if you're a leader and basically you know you, you 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 know you tend to start realizing that you, you you're not actually having followers anymore people are not actually you know getting to you know come on board when you say let's go they they kind of like they they, they kind of they detail they, they think twice before they they kind of join join you or when you might not be actually delivering the results for maybe some of the things that you might have said you were going to do things like that or when you're not literally setting the example when you're not visible I remember, you know, uh, there are times where we, are, we we as part of our team in my organization, we tend to always say that, hold on, where's our delivery manager or where is uh, the the IT director of, you know, so 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 much so that we had to have an open plan where the, the IT director hasn't got an office. So it's once in a while we actually see him sitting there and working like any one of us as well. So those are the kind of things that basically help you to start picking out, you know, in, in instances where people might be feeling a little bit jitter. Again, it's about responsibility. If you show responsibility, Responsibility, you know, no matter what you, you, you're doing, basically that gives people the opportunity to know that, okay, we are still in tandem with our leader and our manager. So 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 forget about the privilege, you know, of being at the top there and, and then types of money. No, it's about responsibility. So those are the kind of things for me would obviously be the kind of, um, um, you know, I would say, uh, um, 
you know, hints to make you, you know, you know, start, you know, reevaluating yourself in one way or the other. Thank you, Therese. What I, what I noticed was that once I put our mics on mute, we are able to, to hear Hester and the things that she's saying. So that is why from time, you know, while speaking, I'll just mute the mic so that we can hear what whoever is saying. So thank you so much, Terry. I think uh, from a recap, you know, what both of you are saying, um, Hester is like, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel that there's a drop in, in, in the way people follow you. You're going to feel that there's something that is not right. Because if you, if you are a leader, which is identified and not playing your role, and you, you feel as if there's a lot of pressure on you, you feel as if you're, you feel, you know that your goals and your, you know, your vision or your strategies are not aligning. If you said in the next six weeks or in the next 10 weeks, I'm going to achieve this, and in 10 weeks you've not achieved that, then you know that you are failing. You know that you're not playing your role. If you say, if you say, if you, if you throw yourself, as, as Terry was just saying, that my team is looking on, you know, they're looking at me, they're really counting on me to, 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 to lead them or to manage them. And I realize that my team is not performing because I am not available when they need me. That means I'm failing. You also have to analyze and check on the growth of your team. If 10 years or say two years down the road, you see that the person who used to be maybe the data inputter is still a data inputter, that is an automatically you're not playing your role. Because as a leader, you must be able, as Terry said before, move people from one part of the career to the other. You must be able to see how they are growing and you must be able to support them. So I definitely do understand, as Terry mentioned as well, that if you have no follower, Sometimes you go, yes, girl, I first you to say, oh, let's go. And you say a whole lot of people coming, following you. And then you say, let's go. And you see just one or two people like, okay, I don't really want to go. But, you know, this brings us to our question of loyalty. And before getting back to um, getting onto that question, let's see, Ramses is saying it is important to get the ability to direct in implementing day-to-day -day work efforts in review resources needed and also in anticipating need along the way that is good it's good to identify or anticipate the needs along the way so absolutely fantastic so let's go to our next question which is more on loyalty i think this is a big part of of, of, of our conversation today it's going to take us maybe um a few questions but talking about loyalty sometimes we are stuck you know with what we can achieve and what we want order to achieve. We are stuck with other people's decision and it makes us feel small or rather makes us feel we are not influencing um, our staff or our colleagues or our management or our leadership. So does management or leadership style influence employees' loyalty or engagement? Terence, I think Lester has just given us an automatic coming to you do you think the way you manage people or your style as a leader do you think it can influence the way people will behave their loyalty or their engagement to the projects that you are rolling we're having serious connection pro problem guys i i think today is just one of the worst things Sarah, can, you, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, can I carry can yeah, I carry can on? I can I carry on? Yes, you can, sure. Okay. okay. So basically, as I was, so saying, as I was saying, you know, saying, you know leadership, leadership and management, and management they, are distinct, they are distinct, right? right? And, yeah. we and we know that leadership, that leadership, is, leadership more is more strategic and management is more tactical. Is more tactical. So, yeah. th so there is a there different, is a different, different degree, of degree of loyalty for each of those. Of those. One of those. Because, for example, right, if, example, if a manager right, is very, very, what was the word? What they call the micro, if, if the micro basically does micro management. There's a likelihood that you'll piece a few piece of your the subordinate or, or some of the works. But if it's somebody that basically lets them let them do the work, show, the show their work, responsibility, show their responsibility you know, show their own show initiative. Their own initiative. It means you it means buy you more buy more. more very hard working, very loyal, loyal employees, essentially. So yeah. that that's how I see that, that link. I see that link. That link. 
that link. And then also and then from also, a, a leadership from point of view, a leadership point of view, a leader basically a leader educate basically people educate to improve. To improve. Yeah. While yeah, from a management while, point of view, the kind of the kind of, uh, kind of uh, discipline kind of people discipline to improve. People to improve. So that basically so means that the, 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 the lawyer should be a little bit different. It's a little bit different. From a leadership point of view to a management point of view. Management point of view. So if, for example, so if, for you, example you, you you do um, uh, a, critique um, uh, a critique of uh, of, of, of an employee, uh, of an employee, and that critique and is considered that to be is fair, to be fair, and the person takes on board the, the critique and does better. Does better. That person will be more loyal, will be to more loyal to that manager because what that because does is basically it helps basically improve the person improve personally. The person personally. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's so one it's of those very tricky, those areas very tricky areas when it comes to leadership, comes and, to management. leadership and management. All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much, um, Terry. Let's see. Let's see. Before I recap, let's see. Hester is back with us. Let's see what she has to say on this. Hi, Hester. We're talking about um, we're talking about influencing you know influencing loyalty and engagement so what do you think it definitely how um employees react you know their loyalty and engagement absolutely 100 percent um, is influenced by the style of management. When you are managing, it's really important, going back to communications, you know, it's really, really important that you keep lines of communications open between you and your employees. You know, it's really important that you find many different ways to communicate, you know, what you call top-down, bottom-up communications, um, so that employees understand that um, you're not only instructing them, but that they are also being heard. Uh, so it's really important, you know, how you engage with your workers and no matter how big an organization is, you are still able to get down to the last man on the shop floor if you have proper systems in place um, to communicate. Um, it's also important that people, like I stated earlier, find their voices. You know, as a leader, it's important that you um, allow people to find that voice. Um, because once they find it, you will find more loyalty. You know, if people feel that they are actively involved in the organization, um, they tend to take ownership. But um, if they're not, you know, then you might have some challenges there. Um, so Adeline, my computer, my phone might go off in a second because I have some technology issues going on here. Just wanted to add that. <laughs> so I'll come back on and I'll come back on. Okay. I think we can't we can't hear you we can't hear you again. Hear you again. I'm sorry. I think Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah, you can tell that there's a little bit of a Yeah, yeah, a, we can. A break in the internet connection. That there's a little bit of a a big internet which I'm, fine. I'm so sorry guys we hardly have issues like this but it's okay we we sit, we sit talking we're conversing and we do understand how irritating it can get so we're trying to make simple as possible so i was just i mean i was just agreeing with what hester and terence have said i was agreeing that employee involvement and employee engagement are two things that are so important in any workforce be it if you're a leader or you are a manager you must involve your team you must involve your staff and you must involve your employees this is an area in HR which i really found fully um 
interesting because each time we were discussing employee engagement, employee involvement, I realized that without this involvement or without this engagement, the work cannot move on. What happens when you give workload to someone who doesn't understand what you want to achieve? In order for you to communicate, in order for you to give workload to someone, you must be able to communicate with them. And as Hester said, bottom down, top up, however you want to do it, make sure you do communicate and make sure you do get them to be involved, to be part of that. Because you're influencing the way they look at you as a leader. You're influencing the things or the, the engagement or you're influencing how far they go in order to get that job done. Sorry. So we have a question. We have a few questions, Terence. I think we're just going to tackle this question between you and I. We, okay. we are leaders. So I think we have uh, Faisal who is asking, what is more important in times of crisis or pandemic? Is it leadership or is it management? Terry, you want to have a go with that? Okay. okay. That's a good That's one. A good and one. I'm uh, going to use an example, an example um, um, to do that. So you know, because in in terms of pandemic, pandemic, there is a lot of uncertainty, which means people get tends to have a very foresee idea of the vision. So a, a good so leader a good is very leader important is very here important because here. what a leader does is basically reevaluate the vision and then start set then start uh, set, some uh, kind of a started some, some task some task or tactical or um, tactical endeavor, um, endeavor which then the management will then ensure that that is delivered yeah you yeah. know so you that's know, that's so what that's, I, I would think is very important it's very important in fact i'm so going to be doing a session along the lines along of uh, lines pandemics, of, uh, pandemics uh, and what what and happened what from what a visionary point of view, point of view. Mm -hmm. i think I'm, I'm going to add a little bit to to what terence has said uh Faisa. personally i believe a good leader is what we need in times of crisis this is because one of the core skills you know one of the core skills of a leader is his ability, as his or her ability, as Terry just said, to be able to make big decisions, change, adapt to change. A pandemic is, is something that um, that is not planned. This is something that happens, or this is something that you know. A crisis is something that you know you don't, you, you never run a business and say I'm going to have this crisis or that crisis. You can forecast it, but this is this is something that when it happens, you don't know the shape, the form or how it happens so mm -hmm. a leader is that person who is able to roll their sleeves get their hands dirty get work done get things done during a time of crisis and that's and that's what and that's what and that's, wh and that's why in america and that's why in america, in america they have america, a, a room have called a, a room the situation called room the situation room that room basically is a that room where the leader where the comes leader into comes whenever in, there's some whenever kind of a crisis there's, there's or there's a, a, there's a situation. There's a situation. So what you do is then you so bring you along you people, bring people, people that will help you brainstorm and then basically have a vision of how you, you, deal, of how with you deal with that crisis or deal with that pandemic. Or do with that and then pandemic. from there you have and your managers that will go out there and get the job done. I think you're 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 right. I mean, we've we've gone all the way to America, but I want to give an example of my 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 you know my last employment before I set up my own company. We had a room, we had an area, a team called Aspire. The Aspire team are very good facilitator. These are people who are so analytical, so smart, and their thinking heart is always on. Whenever mm -hmm. there is a crisis all the directors of my company will meet with the Aspire team. And within 30 minutes maximum of that consultation meeting, the Aspire team is able to provide the leaders with not a solution, but with a way forward. Because the solution is something that you only see, you know, at the end of it all. So yeah. the Aspire team yeah. is, a, I mean, this is a strategy which I think most companies should adapt, you know. You should have a booty mate, a booty partner, you should have an Aspire team. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter how you want to call it, but you should have this Aspire team whereby you have smart analysts who are able to evaluate the situation and change it as soon as it hits. So yeah. we have yeah. another question, Terence, which is um from Karen. Complexion, okay. how do you identify when employees consider the manager a leader and the leader not inspired? So I love that question. Terence, is that a question you want to have a go at it? Okay, let's let's okay, let's, 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 let's read this question again. Let's read this question again. 
Completion. How do you identify when the employees consider the manager a leader and consider the leader not inspiring? Because imagine we'll be talking about the leader has to be inspiring, 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 inspiring. What? Well, okay. The manager okay. is inspiring and the leader is not inspiring, or that person who is supposed to be the leader is not inspiring. Okay, this this, okay, this way will, this be, a way will be a situation where, situation where it's almost like a failing like a failing, failing, leadership, failing leadership leadership yeah, leadership, yeah. and sometimes and in organizations like, organization like this you know you will see, you know, some, you employee see some employee to actually, to actually would, 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 maybe take the rein or, or you know take some responsibilities and start doing tasks and you know performing things they're not necessarily the leaders but they're basically using initiative so you know and then sometimes in a situation like this you know, employees you know, might decide employees to might become decide demoralized, demoralized and essentially, and essentially you, know, you know, start ceasing to follow, follow follow the lead, the, 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 the leader or the leader. So it's it's so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very difficult one. Very difficult one. I think um I totally understand, Karen. I Terry, I'm, I'm going to come from a different perspective. I'm going to come from a situation whereby an employee is um is demotivated, as you've said, is demotivated by a leader, and they need and they look up to their manager but then a manager as we've previously identified or established is that person who has limited um i don't want to say limited opportunity but they have limited say in how the vision of the company has to you know they have limited say they cannot change the vision because once a leader who is usually the ceo or the director or the yep. person at the top yep. in this case once they have that vision management or the manager has limited um powers within an organization to change that but then again i'll come back to our aspire group this is where and um, you know this is where a, a certain like the aspire group is important this is where a certain like the analyst group in the company is very important this consulting group in the company is a, is a group that um through employees feedback because employees, trust me, employees do talk. They do write a lot on their feedback report. And through employees' feedback, through uh, meetings with HR, they understand where the gap is. And they understand how to take this gap to the leadership. And they have projects, they have programs, which can help the leader to actually retrace their position and take the lead. Now, it doesn't mean a manager cannot lead. No, a manager mm -hmm. can lead. This we've established. We've all established that a manager can lead. But it doesn't also mean, sorry, I think I've just brought back in. It doesn't also mean a leader cannot give an opportunity for a manager in an organization to take control. They can't take control. But I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say, um, Karen, I wouldn't say because they are considering um, the manager as a leader, it means the, the leader is not inspiring. It could also mean at that point in their career, there is that gap between the leader and the employee, meaning the person with whom they have direct contact with on a daily basis is their leader. And in a situation like this, I believe the leader should be able to, uh, the manager should be able to lead. So in this case, we're talking about the same thing. We're talking about um, the overlay, because initially we started by saying there's an overlay, and this is the point where the manager shows their leadership skills, skills. skills. and help to inspire the employees. So the employees shouldn't, shouldn't uh, skip, shouldn't be demotivated purely because the person they consider a leader is still, or is not inspiring. It's not doing it. Okay. Okay. You understand what I mean? So as an employee or as a staff, you should be able to to be inspired by the person who supports you directly. See what I mean? So maybe Hester might have something to add to this. Hester, we're just talking about a situation where an employee consider the manager a leader and consider the leader not inspiring. How, how do you deal with Okay, I didn't get that question. Can you repeat? How do you 
Okay, I will attempt, okay, I will attempt How to, answer, to answer. So is that the question, question from Karen? From Karen? Yes, yes, it's a question from Karen, yes. Okay. Well, I think um, employees, when you have done the proper engagements with your employees and you've built the proper relationships with your employees, they tend to be a bit open and um, they will communicate back to you. And so I think employees, uh, um, many times if you build the proper structures will be more direct and, and let you know um, because they will exemplify it in many different ways. They might ignore it instructions um you know they might begin to do things against the organization um and things that you know you will realize that it might have a very lackadaisical approach to how um they are working maybe they came on board and they were very Hello, Hester, can you hear me? Wow, this has been, to be honest, this has been one of the most difficult sessions we've hosted in forever. But to not be despair, I think um, the internet sometimes plays against our very connectivity powers. Terence, can you hear me on your end? Yes, yes, I yes, can yes, hear you. Yes, I can hear you. is gone now. We'll actually be just eight minutes to the end of the show, and I think it's been an interesting, interesting session because we kind of have, you know, internet connection, but amid the internet connection, we've managed to cover all our topics. We've managed to cover, you know, the different things that we have to do. This is a very important topic, and we're definitely going to be bringing this topic again, better connectivity, better network, because we do believe that it is important for us to understand the difference in this. We have managed, Hester, Terence, and myself, to cover as much as possible. But to be honest, when the network is um is falling apart and putting you in all, you know, all these situations, it is so difficult for you to focus on your train of thought. So yep. I'm sure yep. Terence, as, as well as myself, we've lost our train of thought along the way, and Hester as well, the same. But we also do understand that whatever information we put out there, whatever inspiration we put out there, you've been able to go home with something. Talking about going home with something, Terence, is there something, anything you want to say to our audience today? Well, uh, well, the only uh, thing I will say is that, is that, is that you know, that, you know, is if everybody, if everybody has, has any goals, any goals uh, and, uh, and, and, and and vision, vision and they and expire, they expire do, anything do anything in life, they should know, they should know that know with that a lot of hard, hard work, work, a lot of desire, desire a lot of passion, lot of passion they should be able to do it. And, and there is no better is time, no better now, time to now to do a reflection, do a reflection of, of, you know, of, of any kind of any yourself kind of or, 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 anything or anything else that you want to do. Want to so, do. So, and we and are all we part, are of, um, part of um, the same journey, the same journey, journey to be journey successful. To successful. And so we, and we so share we our share knowledge, our we knowledge, share our ideas. ideas, we are part of the, same, part ecosystem. Of the same ecosystem. So, you know, so, I, as, I, I said, as I said, I am, I'm a, I am a coach, I'm a mentor, I'm a mentor and I'm a business I'm a consultant, business as, consultant well. as well. So, so I, do I do share a lot of my knowledge. Of my knowledge. I, also I also entertain, entertain a, lot questions, a lot of questions and also learn as well. So, you know, anyone can reach me when they want and I do reach out as well. Yeah. So thank you so much, Terence. Thank you so much for coming on board, Corporate Women in Leadership, and thank you for inspiring our audience. We do know that usually um, we we we're gonna set we're gonna change the time of our of our session to evening because most people at this point they as as my staff were telling me, ma'am, people now go back to work. People have gone back to work. They work back in their offices. So it's going to be challenging to get people to be involved and engaging on some of our you know, on on. on of this session, Terence, I know you're very um, I know you're very passionate about career progression, career growth, and I know particularly that you're very passionate about um career in IT. Will you be happy to come back in the subsequent session to talk to our audience about a career in IT, how to start, what to do, and how to do it? 
Yes, definitely. Yes, definitely. In, 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 yeah, it, it's an area that, as you said again, I have a, a very um, um, they are passionate, and not 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 just not just I see alone, but. You know, but basically, but just, basically just giving people, giving people the, idea the idea of being of motivated, being, motivated uh, being, driven being driven to actually, to you actually, know, flourish in their own careers. Their own careers. Because sometimes yes. people sometimes just people need just that, that little, bit push. little bit of a push. They need that little they bit of um, uh, somebody, somebody that can tell them that, that you can do it. You can do it. And then it will and give them that 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 that, uh, that desire to work harder. But in, pas- in particular, in the IT in the sector, IT sector and, especially and especially to do with the uh, uh, aspects around aspect project, around delivery, project delivery, delivery, business analysis, business analysis you know, change, management, change management, management, you know, uh, uh, digital, uh, transformation, digital transformation, and all the other emerging, the other technologies, emerging out there, technologies out, technologies out there, there, like you know, artificial, like, intelligence, intelligence, and artificial intelligence and automation. And automation. So those are the kind of areas, kind where, of areas where I provide a lot of uh, insight and training. So thank you, Terry. I think we'll be coming back to you because um, from July, we, 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 we're looking into the whole career section. So we're looking mm-hmm. at the career journey from July. So you're going to be an amazing person to, to come on board, you know, yep. and, and yep. support this session because what we're doing here, we're doing it for free. And we're doing this because we believe we want to support those watching us, you know, to take their career to the next level or to believe in their dreams. So yep. thank you so yep. much again for coming. I do see want to really, really... Thank you for coming short notice and I understand what it means to come and speak and especially when you've not had enough time to, to go through what, what needs to have been done. But you've managed the topic, the conversation perfectly and I wouldn't have wished for a different speaker. Thank you so much, Terence. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pop you backstage for now and I'll join you in a minute. Bye. All right, people, thank you so much for sticking your heads up with us amidst the very, very horrible network. It has been the corporate women in leadership and what we'll be talking about, we'll be talking about the difference between leadership and management. Now, I do know this is a topic that we cannot exhaust within an hour because it is a massive topic. We needed to have bring in, uh, brought in examples, we needed to have brought in principles, we needed to have brought in uh, processes, but what we are having on this platform, we're having conversation and this conversation simply means you speakers and myself meaning if you have an idea if you have you know a different perspective you always pop it down in the comment section and we'll be able to share so that others can see tomorrow we're going to have another session this session is going to be a french session so for all of you out there who are french speaking know that we have fantastic speakers tomorrow please do not miss out on this i'll just pop on the banner so you see we'll be having evelyn dior will be tuning in from senegal and nina baka will be tuning in from senegal and of course valerie will be facilitating this session not me and it's going to be a fantastic time because we'll be talking about financial security we have already spoken about financial security in english and we think it's okay we think it's very important for us to talk about financial security in french so we're still working on our timetable we'll let you know when our next session will be it's going to be next week and next week we're going to be talking about personal branding it's about you what we do here is about you personal branding how do you brand yourself to take yourself from this level to the next level so make sure you join us and why we leave you, we're going to pop the video of Faber Freak magazine just launched so you see it again. Hester is here. If we can get her to say one last word before we strike off, which was supposed to be now. Hi, Hester. We're just logging off now. Um, but there's something, if there's a last word you want to give the audience, is there any final words you want to give to our audience today? Yes, I yes, do. First, I, I want to say I'm, 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 I'm 
on the river and it's very windy today. It's a very, very windy day, so I do apologize. Um, we, when it comes to management, we that are playing the role as managers and leaders in organizations, you know, it's really a, a privilege, I continue to say, to have that opportunity. And it's most important that we understand that those that we do bring into our leader, into our organizations, are really people that are trusting us um, to not only manage them in terms of making sure they meet their goals and uh, you know function in their roles, but it's important as leaders that the vision of the organization be something that we communicate effectively to everyone we bring on board. And we also must work hard um, to build a passion um, in each person that comes on board. And that takes work. Um, it's a day, you know, you have to spend quality time with your employees. You have to listen to them. And yes, when it comes time to, to, to use harsh measures um, to make sure that the job is done, you know, whether it's taking disciplinary actions, um, you know, whatever it might take, uh, um, whether it's, you know, letting an employee go, or sitting an employee down and giving warnings. It's important that you know we manage both, that we do not um, do one without the other because to lead um, without managing as well is to set, uh, um, to create unrealistic, um, an unrealistic organization because then everyone is working on um, fantasies. So it's important that the vision is, is a reality and that we get people on board, we train, we lead, we smile, we laugh with them, we talk with them. But when it comes time to crack the whip, we have to crack the whip in order to make sure that the organization functions as it should, to make sure all of the controls are in place and that we run successful organizations. So thank you so much, and for this time, and it's a pleasure being on, on, on board. Okay, so what I was just saying was I was saying thank you so much, Hester. You know the, the 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 key message is what we take home, and I'm so happy your network was able to to let you come back and give us that take home message. This is the message we are going to capture and put in our review video once we do the video for this session. So thank you so much for watching us. Amid the technical issue, it's been a beautiful time well not as beautiful as we would have wanted that's it we're going to be coming back with this topic when the time is right so that we can all exhaust it and you know and see how we can you know what's your appetite to take the leadership positions or to take the management position so thank you once more i'm gonna love you i'm gonna leave you and i'm going to end the broadcast on the show today with me was esther baker checking in from Liberia and Terence Dickum checking in from Birmingham, UK. And of course, I'm yours truly, Adeline said Kamga checking in from rugby. So I'm going to love you, going to leave you. Bye.